Hello everyone, welcome back to our next video. Um, today we're going to be discussing and showing to you a system designed for coffee, for, so that the main crop is coffee. Coffee is a plant that adapts very, very well to, to agroforestry systems. Um, because it is a forest plant, like uh, many others, and it occupies the understory of the forest, meaning it's the lowest of the trees in the forest. And that has many interesting implications because um, it's really easy to harvest because it's, uh, it's on, your, on your level, you don't have to climb up to harvest or anything. So it's a very, very interesting plant. It's got a great um, value, money-wise, and so that's pretty much it. It has uh, some, some very uh, specific peculiarities of, of, of management and, and how to deal with the plant. But it's a lovely plant to work with it, isn't it? Yeah, it's very beneficial. Like, like we said about the value, it's got great positioning in the market. So uh, there are other plants we can use as, as the bottom layer of the forest that accept the shade well, but not many that uh, has such a strong positioning in the market as coffee does. So we really, we really tend to use coffee in our agroforestry systems. Um, so, so here we, we intend to show you and explain to you how we can you know, make a system designed for it. But in any case, uh, in many other different agroforestry systems, coffee can come as a byproduct uh, in, in, in most cases. Yeah, for sure. And the interesting thing about coffee is that it has a... Um, the, the market value of it varies greatly according to, your, to the quality of, of the fruit, right? And one thing that affects quality a lot is shading. The correct amount of shading at the right time. And also organic matter on the floor. It can increase the fruit quality a uh, thousandfold. And this can... can um, change the value of the bag of coffee from a hundred dollars to a thousand five hundred dollars and even to over five thousand dollars so it really has a very very um, wide market value depending on the quality that you have so okay let's talk a bit about the coffee plant the coffee plant is a plant that um, it comes from Africa and it's a plant uh, well adapted to the shade okay it likes shade it's a lot healthier when it's shaded this uh, has already been documented well documented in many studies that shaded coffee is healthier and this is not hard to see and so we always have uh, plants that will occupy the overstory while coffee occupies the understory. And the overstory, you could have fruit trees, you could have wood. Tell us a bit about this system here. What have you got here, Denaro, that's shading your, your coffee? Yeah, uh, well, we've got uh, well, the classics, the eucalyptus, the bananas, give it the very first quick shade we need. You know, the banana, instant shade. Uh, I find that bananas next to my coffees is really, really the big boom, because it, it gives it that instant, you know, uh, condition where it can relax and not be in that boiling sun we have other trees that the, the birds have already planted and, and they're all been welcome but uh the cashew the cashew has been noted as well as a as a as a quality a quality partner to 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 the coffee because we we speak about the coffee being going well in the shade but it does need that half sunlight it does need that that clearance it does need that sunshine in that time where you know it's got a flower and it's got a boom with the fruit so you know that two three months of the year you really need that sun to come in so we can work with specific plants you've got to work it out in your region what kind of plants can do this for you uh, we, we obviously pruning to bring in this light or we can also try adapt working with trees that uh, the leaves fall in the right time of the year where we have trees like the cashew in certain regions the leaf will drop at the same time, in the same time of the year where the coffee needs that sun. So it all just happens, it's beautiful. Because, uh, you know, we, we need to really work with that. And when you don't have those kind of trees, we need to prune it. You need to take that 
into consideration. Yeah, that's that's a, a really good point. Um, it's it's really interesting to notice that um, some plants, whereas they occupy the understory, they come from regions which have exactly this uh, characteristic that the plants are uh, deciduous. That means they lose the, the leaves. So in cer a, a certain part of the year, the sun will strongly hit the bottom layer of the forest and we really have to take that into consideration when we're managing the system because if we have shading plants that drop the leaves that works perfectly for the coffee tree but other trees like mango tree it's a great plant for shading coffee as well but it doesn't lose its leaves so you really have to work hard on pruning so that you have the right amount of sunlight at the right time um, so speaking a bit about the design of the system, here we've got um, tree rows spaced much like the other systems that we showed. They are six meters apart, right? And it, you, we've got coffee plants in the tree rows, but then when you're a serious coffee pro producer, and coffee is your main crop, in those um, planting beds in between the tree rows, you're also going to have coffee so that's the, that that's the point because the, the coffee density is a lot higher than most trees right whereas uh, in a citrus plantation you're gonna have 400 or 500 plants per hectare uh, in a coffee plantation you're gonna have over 5,000 plants per hectare up to up to 15,000 people have been doing a lot of experiments yeah up to 15,000 plants per hectare so you really completely occupy the area with coffee and th this you're going to understand why when we actually go into the the theory of stratification then you're going to understand why and how each layer occupies a certain amount of the space it belongs to that layer so we're going to leave that for later and then um, so you've got coffee covering completely the bottom layer and then you're gonna have um, partial shade coming from banana trees you can have some citrus mango trees cashew and all that and one thing that's really interesting which we mentioned in the fruit system and you're gonna tell us a bit about it is using annuals yeah and by annuals or, or early fruit producers uh -huh. to have an, uh, a, a, a first return a first income before the coffee starts producing. Yeah, it's, it's spectacular. The coffee really thrives on growing with companion planting. You know, the kind of uh, manure you bring in, the kind of care you have for your fruit and veg, for that veg, for the early seedlings and the veg, that kind of irrigation, that kind of care you need to have for a good tomato. Uh, once that the coffee is integrated in that kind of companion planting, you know, it's, it has that kind of care that you have, the same kind of care that you have for your veg, it really, it really loves it. That's when it's like, wow, you've given me the extra, the extra little bit. You know, I'm gonna pay exactly. you back. And what do you get with that? You get the fruit a year early. Uh, people talk about coffee giving you fruit three and a half years. We've got coffee booming at two and a half years, two, two years we, we've seen fruit. So it really gives us the extra little, the boom once it's, you know, with the irrigation, with the consortium of all the other veg. Uh, it happens for a lot of people that uh, do produce uh, veg that do have a market for veg where like we do here we in the corridors in, in, in the beds that we have in between the tree rows you know with the veg beds in, in between uh, it could be that we want to reuse that three or four times three or four cycles of veg and then uh, eventually we introduce the coffee in the last cycle so I've done I planted three cycles of veg on the fourth cycle we introduced the coffee because that's we're considering that's the last why because we're considering now that the, the, the canopies of the trees that you know it's got to shade up so this is the time for us to come in with, with that last coffee bring it in let the coffee come in and, and occupy that space which prior was a uh, high rotations of veg yeah that's that's really is a great system because um, it really gives you a head start right on on financially wise I mean because you really when you start when you plant your coffee you already have generated a significant amount of income and that's really great for 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 your cash flow um, we, you know we, we we get great harvest 
in, in the first couple of few years you know the, 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 the third the fourth year will get great harvest and then you got to really uh, watch out with the with the correct pruning okay we we can come back to this we can talk about it you know we'll bring you in on this but uh, it's basically another lesson we need to talk about the pruning for your four or five year old coffee uh, to keep it booming for, for, for longer sure. cycles you know coffee is a plant that uh, you know will live 200 years if you look after it no problem or so it really is a case of us keeping it fresh keeping it new yeah keeping it it's pruned. a very very long cycle and as you have realized by now pruning is a, a very important part of any agroforestry system and, and for coffee is especially important right um, so you really have to keep up your pruning and not only of the coffee plant itself but of all the plants around it so that you have exactly good amount of sunlight and now coming back to the idea of, of the those plants that bring you the first income you, you you're able to see it here um, we already have uh, papaya which has been taken down it produced for a couple of years and now it's becoming organic matter for coffee so it goes back to that idea it's not only the income you get from the first uh, plants that produce but also all the legacy that they leave you know that all the organic matter so uh, papaya is also a great plant for having wow. coffee it's and really amazing it, it? exactly and the organic matter that it, it leaves behind it just for coffee it's just a it's completely luxury um, for it so um, from I us yeah from us from us we're cool to go yeah uh, let's talk about it in the webinar you exactly know? if you if you produce coffee let us know uh, if, if in your region you think coffee goes well let us know let's talk about it uh, you know we want to help so bring us the questions and we we can fill you in on that exactly thank you very much for watching we hope you enjoyed it and it was helpful for you and we'll catch you in the next video see you later